everybody it is april wolf ranch girl and welcome to the wolf ranch and also welcome 2024 it is crazy that it is already a new year um 2023 was like a whirlwind and so that's what we're going to talk about today oh my goodness so i just talked for like 20 minutes and realized <laughs> that this was not on at all oh goodness gracious I'm bringing some 2023 into the video with me. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. Um, welcome 2024. Uh, let's do a little recap of 2023. I can see that the reflection is happening over here again. Um, 2023. Was it a good year or was it a bad year? Um, if I could describe 2023 in one word, it would be whirlwind. From the start of the year until the last day of the year, we ran like crazy people. Um, at the end of 2022, we took a leap of faith and um, purchased our first investment property. And then in 2023, we hit the ground running and started renovating that. Um, that was an experience, let me tell you. Um, I believe that I did do a before and after video on the channel, so you can find that. Um, if I can find it, I will link it in the cards um, or at the end of the video. But that was a labor of love, for sure. We definitely learned a lot. Um, that part has been a success. We have had it rented. We have not recouped our expense. The expense of that was insane. Um, but once we got that area rented, we were supposed to start working on the second unit and that still, I'm not even going to talk about that right now, but that is still an ongoing um, process. So that's a good thing. Um, the amount of time that it took and we just, I think that both my husband and I felt like we were hamsters in the ball. You know, we just kept going and going and going and going and going. And you couldn't really tell if you're going anywhere. Like, you know what I mean? You're just running yourself ragged, but you can't really see if you're making progress. Um, and then in addition to that, we do a lot of volunteering. Um, so we tried to bring a community event to uh, our hometown and um, it was decently successful. We were able to raise enough money um, to donate to a local charity. And that was the first time that my husband and I had done that ourselves. So the Wolf Ranch um, actually sponsored that, put everything on, took on all of the expense, and then all of the proceeds um, went to this organization. And so that was a really neat thing for us to be able to do. We continue to work with the local um, Chamber of Commerce with several projects that they had going on. And, and uh, usually we're done with that in October, but we continued on and went through the Festival of Trees and Christmas, uh, which then, of course, led us into the holiday season and all of the things that go with that. So we and on top of all of those things, our kids are in sports. Um, he has work events. I have school events. So it just was such a busy, busy, busy year. Um, and y'all, I'm getting ready to turn 45. Like, I'm starting to get tired. I'm starting to get tired. <laughs> so um, I think that we just ran ourselves ragged in 2023. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad year by any means. Um, but I wouldn't also categorize it as a good year. I'd almost categorize it as a wash. I mean, obviously, we feel blessed just for having that time. Um, and we did get some things accomplished, but at what cost? So opportunity cost was that we were able to do all of those things with our investment property and with all of the volunteering. We were able to be at our kids' sports, which obviously is extremely important. Um, things that fell by the wayside when you're not at your home is your home. So we did not do all of the things with the garden that we wanted to do. We didn't do any of the home projects that we wanted to do. We just weren't home. Um, so that's something that I want to change in 2024. So I don't really have a word of the year. 
I couldn't encompass everything into one word. Um, the theme that I'm going to try to stay with and plaster all over everything for 2024 is quality over quantity. So I personally am a yes person. Like, uh, you know, one of my spiritual gifts is administration. Um, another <laughs> is is giving. <laughs> so giving of my time. So it is... I, it is almost painful for me to say no to somebody when they ask me for help. Like I really, it really pains me to be able to do that. Um, but if I'm going to be able to keep my sanity, I have realized that I'm going to have to set some boundaries. Um, I'm not really sure what that's going to look like yet. I'm working on it, but I need I think that one of the things that I really neglected this year in 2023 was um, using my time management skills the way that I had in years past. We were so busy and by the time that we stopped, we were so exhausted that I just didn't do pretty much any of the planning things that I normally did in the past. So if you go back in the channel, and you look, you will see plan with me videos or planner videos or planner setup videos because I, that's one of the things that I really enjoy is utilizing a planner. And let me show you guys. Okay. So here is my planner. Okay. This is my, uh, 2023 Erin Condren life planner. So it starts See, it says 2023, 2024. It starts in June, okay? Now, normally on a Sunday evening, I would sit down. I would sync my paper calendar with my Google calendar. I would do all of the meal plans, um, you know, check all of the sports, get everything together on a Sunday that I needed to do for the rest of the week. Let me show you this. Okay. And, of course, I made it pretty because that's one of the things that I like to do. Okay, so here's July. Oh, gosh. All right. So I have a few things in there. But if we start moving through, like, there's nothing. Like, there's nothing. Nothing. I mean, a few things where I was like, okay, I got to get back on it. I got to get back on it. And then just nothing. I mean, this is very unlike me. And I think that that's possibly why. Now, here's December. <laughs> so I did finally, I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing some things that I really like to do again. Um, and I, I usually always have like my shopping list for all of my people for um, birthdays and all of that kind of stuff. Like I would... This is just not anything like what it would have been. Now, I did go through and do some things here. But nothing. I mean, just I just did not utilize my tools the way that I normally do. I, I did not either have the time or did not take the time to do those things. And that's one of the things that I teach my students in school is to utilize their tools. Now, I do have a Google Calendar, and I am utilizing that. But it's just not the same thing of having a paper, paper calendar and seeing everything lined out right in front of you for the week, okay? So that is one of the things that I want to get back to. So for, for the year, like I said, the theme is quality over quantity. So quality time, like I need to choose to use my time in a manner that is going to be the most productive and going to allow for the most enjoyment. Um, so when I'm at school, I need to do schoolwork. I don't need to bring that home with me. I don't need to, um, you know, set it aside for later and try and work on other things. Like I need to get all of my schoolwork done at school. And I'm actually really, really good at that. I generally... If I'm not teaching, then I'm grading, I'm updating grades, I'm emailing, you know, students and parents. I'm very, very good at that. When I'm at work, I am dialed in and I am working. Um, things that I am not very good at right now is spending my time 
planning for what needs to be done at home and financially um, and for my own self-care. Um, if somebody calls me and is like, hey, can you come over and help doing help to do this? Or can you do this? Or can you do this? My first response is yes. And then everything else just falls to the wayside. So that's going to be my focus. Like I'm going to try and say, let me get back to you on that. Not no, because I told you that's really hard for me. Not to say no, but let me get back to you on that so that I can look at my calendar, find out what else it is that's going on, and then be able to make a quality decision about that time. Um, I have gained, if you go back and look at any of those videos, you will see a very um, physical change since 2020. So I have gained um, 60 pounds and weight gain is normal. I think that most people are dealing with that, um, especially after 2020 uh, when our lives drastically changed. But um, I definitely need to address that. Not in a vanity standpoint, as in I don't like the way I look, but as a my body is starting to show the signs that things are not okay. So I need to get that under control. I have to commit to giving myself at least 30 to 45 minutes every weekday to accomplish, you know, the physical activity goals that I need to accomplish. So I started it last week. Someone told me once never to start that on a Monday and I just ever since then haven't. So I started on a Thursday and so far I've kept it. Every weekday, I have, you know, made sure that I have 30 to 45 minutes for right now, and then I'll increase that as the time goes to do the physical activity. And I will tell you that I do feel a lot better. I feel a lot less stressed. Um, I'm sore, but it's, I'm starting out, you know, easy, so it's not super terrible. Um, but I am setting that expectation. I've told my kids, I've told my husband, look every day of the week. I'm taking this amount of time to be able to do a workout of some kind, whether I go to the gym, whether I do it at home, but this is happening and I would appreciate your support. And so far, everybody's been good with that. So other thing is family time. Um, I don't want to scramble around for family time. We know that we have sports. We um, know that we have to do those things with our kids. So that automatically is going to be something that's on the calendar. Um meal prepping that's another thing is not necessarily meal prepping but meal planning so i'm not a big meal prepper because it's difficult for me to just warm stuff up and that's not the expectation that my family has of us either um but i also so i can't like some people on sundays like cook all of their food on Sundays and put it into the meal prep containers and then they just stick it in the fridge and then people come and pull from that as they will. And sometimes that works for people. So far that hasn't worked for us. Now I may try to make like a casserole and divvy it up into five to seven different dishes. That way if we have to be someplace with our youngest son, then the older two have something to pull from and we're not ordering pizza or anything like that. So that's what I'm talking about. But generally on Sundays, I will look ahead for the week and say, okay, do we have dinner at grandma and papa's? Do we have a, a night out that we have to go out to eat like a dinner meeting or something like that? Um, what do we have in our fridge? So on and so forth. And I will meal plan and I need to get back to that because it was just a free for all. It was just a free for all. The amount of money that we spent eating out this year was astronomical. It was just insane, and I do not want to do that again for finances and for health. <laughs> so definitely those are quality time goals that I have. So working at work, daily um, health time, family time, prepping or planning for meals, and then also limiting side jobs. So we have some financial goals that we want to accomplish and in order for that to happen, I have taken on um, some additional side hustles. So you guys should know that I already have a Teachers Pay Teacher store. So that brings in a little bit of money. And then I've started doing some freelance marketing on the side. So I've taken on two clients um, and 
I've decided that that's all I can do right now. So I won't be taking on any other clients um, and I'm going to have to look at the amount of money that I'm earning with those two side jobs and equate that in time. So if I'm only earning, I'm just pulling this out of the air, this isn't. So if I'm only earning, let's say $100 a week from one of these jobs, but I'm spending 10 hours, that is not a time equate, you know, that doesn't equate that amount of time for that amount of money. So I'm going to have to go through, decide, well, I already know how much I'm billing them per hour, how much the contract is for, and then um, appropriate that time so that it's not a disproportionate amount. $50 an hour is what I'm charging and they're paying $100 a week, then that's two hours a week. And that's what I need to be able to do with that. Um, so that's gonna be a big thing for me. I also really enjoy YouTube, so I wanna have time for that as well. So I'm really gonna have to look at my schedule and see, maybe I'm not, I mean, I want to do a, a video a week. Um, I was not able to do that in 2023. I did really well at the beginning of the year, but then things just went sideways and I would like to be able to do that to keep that consistent. Um, so just really taking the time <laughs> to evaluate how much time I actually have and how I want to spend it. And maybe I'm going to have to stay up later. Maybe I'm going to have to get up earlier. I'm not really sure yet. But whatever it is that I choose to do, I want to make sure that I, it's going to be a good quality, that I'm um, making good quality decisions with my time, that I'm producing good quality for my clients um, and for my students and for my family. Um, okay, so I do have kind of a roadmap on how to do that, but I kind of went through that already. So I do have some notes here in my little notebook. Um so the first goal was, you know, evaluate time. And then the second goal is our finances. So our finances, I don't want to say took a hit. Um, in 2022, at the very end of the year, we added a driver. And this year, we will be adding another driver. So that's going to be another added expense. Um, we so my budget needs to be evaluated and um, adjusted accordingly, which it has been. We, um, you guys know that we were debt free, and then we did take on the investment property, which is a mortgage, so that is a debt, but it's it's not a toxic debt. You know that is increasing in value. It has increased more than double in value from what we have um, purchased it at. So that's really good. But we did take on some tex toxic debt, a few credit cards to be able to um, take care of the larger repairs that needed to be done. And so I want to get those taken care of and get those off the books. So um, we also invest. So both my husband and I I have an IRA. My husband has what's called additional voluntary contributions with his pension. So we both invest there and we're both increasing those investments this year. So that's already taken place. That's done, ready to go. So I can check that off the list. Um, what we didn't do last year is prioritize savings. So we pretty much sunk everything that we had into this investment property and are still doing that. And I'm kind of nixing that. I'm saying, nope, this is not working for us. We weren't able to go on any vacations last year because I do not do debt vacations. We are not going to incur debt to go on a vacation or to do Christmas or gifts or anything like that. Absolutely 1000% not. It's not happening. Um, but I do want to go on vacation. <laughs> I like to travel. I like to get away. Um, and we need that. We need to separate ourselves from the everyday mundane and experience the, you know, things that this world has to offer. So we definitely are going to prioritize savings. Um, one of the ways that we're going to be able to do that is by eating at home more. Like I said, eating out was really an issue. Um, another thing that I want to do to make the time evaluation easier is to decrease our inventory. Um, so I was just talking to our 12 year old about this. He was really having a rough time keeping his room clean. 
and he was just like, I said, bud, do you like cleaning your room? And he's like, no, I hate it. And I said, well, if you got rid of the stuff that you don't like cleaning up, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to clean. And then it was like, hello, you too. <laughs> so I just want to reduce inventory um, and really evaluate the things that we have. Do we use them? If we use them, how often do we use them? If we do not use them often enough to keep them, maybe, you know, maybe my parents have one of the same thing and then we could borrow um, or, you know, I mean, just, just pretty much minimize. I don't want to say mi I'm going to go to a minimal lifestyle. That's not what I'm saying, but I need to get rid of the clutter, like declutter, get rid of the things that are not useful, have items of quality that we use on a daily basis or a weekly basis that we really enjoy and then do away with the other things that we don't need that are just clutter. So again, the quality over quantity. Um, and then also buying with purpose. So you guys, I'm a stress shopper. I always have been a stress shopper. I do not know how to make that go away. Um, I did really, really well when we were in our debt payoff journey of almost doing a no buy year. I attempted to do that last year and failed almost immediately. <laughs> and I think that when you set your intentions, like things in the universe just happen and you almost get attacked. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to spend any money. I'm not buying this. And then our dehumidifier went out like literally yesterday. I had to buy a dehumidifier. And then today our kid's TV fell off of the wall in their bedroom the anchor came right literally out of the wall and it fell plump and busted the whole front part of the screen now do they need a tv in their room no does it make my life easier yes <laughs> so don't put anything in the comments about you know not having a tv in there that allows them to do their own thing when it is appropriate yes we monitor yes we know what's happening in there but it makes my life easier so it is a value to me um, but anyway, so that happened. The dishwasher went out at the rental, you know, rental apartment. So it's just, it's the things, you know, so you just have to deal with them. But instead of stressing about it, maybe I need to, you know, go for a walk or maybe I need to go make some granola or do something with my hands, you know, to help with the stress instead of getting on and going shopping. So that is the plan. So quality over quantity, and that is going to encompass time, home, and finances this year. So those are my um, big goals this year is to reevaluate my time, reevaluate the home and what needs to be done here, and reevaluate finances and what needs to be done to meet our goals there. So I kind of feel like I was rambling like a crazy person. Um, and if that is the case, then I'm really, really sorry. So let me know, you guys, what your goals um, are in the comments below. Like, what are your goals? What is your evaluation? Do you have a theme or a word for the year? And um, I am really, really, really going to try and bring you guys some quality content. Um from here on the ranch and for all sorts of different things, finances, um, things at the home, cooking, meal planning, maybe uh, showing you guys how I do things will make me do things um, more regularly um, and also natural living. So you guys know that I'm really big into savvy natural living. I've really turned our home around and I would love to share that with you as we move along and as I learn new things on that journey too. So I hope that you had a wonderful 2023. I hope that you had a safe and happy holiday season. And I hope that 2024 gives you all of the blessings um, that can be bestowed upon you. So thanks for being here. And until next time, I'll see you later.